This is part two of the Spikerbox DIY instruction kit, brought to you by Backyard Brains. In this step, we'll build the recording cable and the speaker. You should already have the PCB assembled. If not, you can go back and watch the first video. We're going to start with the speaker assembly. Let's first cut off a few good inches of the speaker lead. We don't want too much slack inside the spiker box. Now we'll use a pair of wire strippers and we're to clip off the tips of each one of these leads. It's a good idea to twist the wires at the end so the leads don't fray. Again, we're going to use a silly putty to act as an extra pair of helping hands. This will stabilize the speaker connector so that we can use our soldering iron and solder. I next position the solder so that it lies adjacent to one of the two posts. It's hard to see, so I'll show you what's happening. With the speaker connector firmly in place, I can lower one of the wires and connect it so it's adjacent to the outside of one of the posts. I could then apply the heat from the soldering iron and move the solder onto the connections. We can then repeat this for the other side. Again, when we're lowering the wire, make sure it's on the outside of the post. We want to make sure that no way can the connections cross between the two. Now that the connector is soldered in place, I like to take a piece of electrical tape and separate the two posts and then wrap it around so it's securely in place. So that now completes our speaker assembly. It's time to build the recording electrode. The electrode consists of six inches of speaker wire, an RCA plug, and two needles. We're gonna start with a pair of scissors and we're gonna cut both ends of the speaker wire. The goal is to separate both wires from the speaker wire for about three quarters of an inch. We're going to use our wire strippers to strip both ends of the speaker wire. That's four wires in total. On one end, I strip away about a half an inch of the speaker wire. This will be the end of the speaker wire we use to make our electrodes. We're going to need enough exposed wire to be able to wrap around the pins a few times. Now on the other end, I don't expose as much wire, maybe about a quarter of an inch. We're going to use this inside of the RCA plug. We don't need a lot of exposed wire because it just increases the chances of a short happening within the plug. So now we're going to get ready to solder the speaker wire to the RCA plug. I like to ensure that the wire will not fray once it's inside, so I twist it many, many times so it's very tight. Now we're going to thread the speaker wire through both sides of the plug. I like to keep the speaker wire in the center of the connector and then solder on the outside posts. So now let's turn the RCA plug over and solder the back side as well. Remember, there's no polarity on these wires. It doesn't matter which side goes to which.
We could use the tip of our wire strippers to be able to crimp the wire in place to act as a strain relief from the RCA plug. Now it's time to take the cover of the RCA plug and slide it across the speaker wire and screw it into place. Sometimes we add just a little bit of super glue so it doesn't unscrew when we're plugging it back in and out of the spiker box. Finally, on the other end of the plug, we take the exposed speaker wire and wrap it around the center part of a pin. I like to make sure it wraps around about two or three times. Now let's go ahead and solder that into place. Now let's repeat this entire process for the other pin, and when we're done, our electrode is complete. We now have everything ready to begin our final assembly of the spiker box.